إن الحمد لله وحده الصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who blessed us uh, and who facilitated for us this session in which we are supposed to know the weaknesses of our nafs once identified we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from all sorts of weaknesses and grant us the strength of iman, strength of amal. And Allah's choices, blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, who showed us the path, path, path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to live a peaceful life, blissful life in dunya and how to get the success in the akhirah. And he gave us a practical road map, map for this. As we know that our nafs is having a lot of weaknesses and in our previous sessions we have been discussing about some of the weaknesses of our nafs, some of the weaknesses of our soul. Of such weaknesses we discussed about uh, last time, we discussed about, about the, the ostentation, show off and as far as the show off or technically a riya, riya is one of the des- deadly diseases of the soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for the sake of His worship. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Indeed, we did not create the jinns and the humans except to worship, except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our basic objective is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The riya is such a termite, such a deadly and disastrous disease it is such a thing that a person is performing the ibadah. Firstly, shaitan doesn't want us. He tries his top level best to prevent us to perform any form of ibadah. However, when we make our effort to, to, to perform the ibadah, to perform the worship, then his main objective is to spoil it, to destroy it, so that we are not we are not blessed with the reward, which is which is promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on specific forms of the worship. And one of the best tool with the shaitan, one of the best, uh, st- rather the strongest and most effective tool with the shaitan is to cause us to feel show off, to make the action not for the sake of Allah, to do it for the sake of the people. That is riya. And Prophet ﷺ had warned the ummah that this is one of the deadly diseases. That we do, we are performing, we are performing the salah, we are doing the charity, we are observing the fast, the person makes pilgrimage to Makkah to perform the Hajj. And then there, there are many other different forms of ibadah. The objective, the objective is to seek <coughs> pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these different forms of ibadah, different forms of worship. But shaitan, he spoils it, he destroys it when he causes into our heart to feel that we are not doing this for the sake of Allah we are doing this for the sake of someone else the action is performed apparently it is performed for Allah <clears throat> but when we see the essence of the action when we see the spirit of the action it is not done it is not performed for the sake of Allah here is definitely someone else it is other than Allah a person is motivated to perform the salah so that he will get the worldly, worldly reputation. He will earn the worldly respect and he wants to be dignified among the people. And one of the easiest ways to be, to be respected by the people, to earn the dignity in a society is to show, uh, is, to, uh, is to pretend to be a worshipping person, to be a, ma- to be a godly man. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows each and everything. Ya'lamu he is well aware of all the intentions of the people. No one can hide his intention from Allah. We can hide from one another. 
I can hide from you, you can hide from me. But all of us, we cannot hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of all our actions and deeds. Even the remote, the innermost feelings, which are not known to anyone else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it. So while performing the ibadah, there must be a high level of sincerity. There must be a high degree of ikhlas. It is that, it is the element of ikhlas which makes an action to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't accept it. So all our deeds in all our affairs of life, if we fail to achieve ikhlas, if we fail to achieve the sincerity, then however actions, however great actions we perform, it's all useless. It's all thriftless, worthless. Our actions are blessed. They are started with the reward only when there is element of ikhlas in it. So ikhlas and riya, they are two opposite forces. In one single heart, they cannot, they cannot live together. The one who is mukhlis cannot have the riya. The one who is having riya, show off, ostentation, will, not, will be deprived of the ikhlas. That's why our ulama and our scholars, they have paid much attention towards it. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, he mentions, if Riyah is connected to acts of worship, then it is prohibited, since the person who does, not, who does it in this divine area commits a great sin, because he is, he is in fact seeking someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the only one, worthy of all our worship. If, however, Riyah is in something that is not related to worship, such as collecting wealth and seeking prominence and prestige, then it is prohibited only if done with unlawful means. So one of the important things which we need to understand is that Riyah is specifically connected to the forms of worship. To the forms of worship that a person is performing the Salah, is doing the Dhikr, reciting the Qur'an, helping the others, doing the charity, or any other form of ibadah. If, it's, if the intention is to show it to others, but the showing to others, there are also different levels. Sometimes showing others is one of the best form of ibadah, but at the same time, one's sincerity has to be tested there. For example, if, a, if we want to encourage others to do something good, we want to encourage others to to, make, to do the charity, and we know that the people have a good we have a good influence on the people. So if we if we do the charity openly, our intention is to do it for the sake of Allah. But at the same time, there is another intention added to it, and that intention is to motivate others so that they also join that particular act of charity. And this making charity openly. The person is not just, he doesn't want to earn the praise of the people. Rather, his objective is to motivate others so that they also join hands into that particular act of charity. Or likewise, there are many other forms, many initiatives. Here, one's ikhlas is tested. So if a person is doing some, or sometimes uh, you, you make others to, to feel that you are performing the salah, or you are going to perform the salah, but your intention is not, is to show off, is to make show off, rather, to motivate others so that they also perform the salah. So that intention, so this way, if a person is performing the, any form of ibadah openly, and he wants others to know about it, and he wants others to, to, to see it, but the, the intention is not to make show off, to get the praises of them, intention is to get them motivated to perform this. As a, sense of as a source of inspiration for them. This is another form of ibadah. However, if a person is doing this to earn their praises, to, to, to be respected in the society, to be known as pious and writers, so-called pious and writers, then this is all a waste activity. Thriftless, useless, worthless activity for which he, he will not get any sort of reward. Rather, 
it will be a source of getting away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our, our main effort should be to get closer and closer to Allah. But this activity, when a person practices Riya, when a person practices ostentation, when he makes show off, instead of getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person is taken away and away from Allah. So it is very important that we we take care of such such things. We 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 should not spoil our actions just to get the praise of the people. Okay, for the sake of argument, people say he's very pious, very knowledgeable, very righteous. Then what? Okay, our soul is contented, our soul is satisfied, our nafs become satisfied with these with these statements. But it, is it going to bring any any benefit us to the, in dunya? Is it going to bring any sort of benefit to us in akhirah? Not at all. Instead, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that on the day of judgment, the first people who shall be cast into the hellfire will be the will be the people with the great deeds. With the great deeds, they shall be the first to be cast into the hellfire. The scholar who achieved the knowledge, the martyr who sacrificed his life for, for the sake of for the sake of deen, and a generous person who spent his wealth day in and day out, but all the all these three will be gathered and put into the hellfire because the element of ikhlas was missing. Because they practiced all their deeds not for the sake of Allah, it was for other than Allah. So we have to be very, very much cautious, specifically in our in our age, in this in this uh, period of test and trial, when to be prominent or the, the the love of Yah, the love of prominence, eminence, is now quite rampant. Everybody wants to be known. Everybody wants to be famous. So the achievement of this popularity has become a kind of objective in our life. And unfortunately, social media has it has added fuel to the fire. Those who were not having access to these things, to these platforms, the easiest platform, platforms to get famous, to get popularity, and many a times through the evil ways, a person gets to, uh, wants to be famous among the people. What else? What even if a person becomes too much popular? There are many a people on the surface of the planet. They are unknown to the people, but known to the heavens. Many are celebrities. They are known to the people, but unknown to the heavens. So we should try our top level best. Wallahi, sometimes I feel too much terrified. Because our life lifeline is growing shorter and shorter. We are getting closer to our, to our qubur, our graves. There's a, there's a beautiful couplet. Allah ya sahib al qasr al muallla. Satudfun anta fi al turabi. Malak al maut yunadi kull yaw. Lidu lil maut wa bnu lil kharabi. Allah ya sahib al qasr al muallla. These are two beautiful couplets in Arabic. Of the man, the lost in the huge buildings, who is living in the high Raise the towers. Allah ya sahib al qasr al muallah. You must remember that your high raise the towers won't benefit you in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Satudfanu anta fi turabi. Soon you shall be buried under the heaps of the soil. After a after few years, after a few months, after a few moments, just we heard the news of demise of uh, one of the brothers. Satud fanu anta fit turabi. You came to this dunya and one day you have to leave this dunya. I always say that we came to this dunya choicelessly. There was no choice of our, it was a choice of Allah to send us to this dunya. And when He will take us from this dunya away, it will be again His choice, not our choice. So we came choicelessly and we have to leave this dunya choicelessly. Malakul maut. Alayhi salam, the angel of death, alayhi salam. When he comes, 
He won't just give us the prayer information that, okay, on so and so day, at this time be prepared, I'm coming to just take your soul. No, no, any reminder. Yes, they are the reminders. They are the reminders. But for those who are diligent, who are intelligent people, it's mentioned that Sayyidina Amr ibn al-Khattab he, he always was accompanied by a person. His job was to remind Sayyidina Umar ibn always of the Akhirah. His job was that Sayyidina Umar commanded him that whenever you feel that I'm getting inclined, I'm getting inclined towards dunya, so remind me of the Akhirah. However, when Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab he grew the white, the one white hair in his beard. Then he said to that person, now, your job is over. Now this white hair is enough for me to remind me of, our, of my akhirah. So it is a sign now, you are moving towards your akhirah. You came to this dunya choicelessly, and soon you shall be buried, buried under the heaps of the soil. Alaya sahib al qasir al mu'allah satudfanu anta fi turabi Malak al maut yunadi kulla yaw. Every day the angel of death calls upon you. He calls upon the people of the world. Lidu lil maut yabnu lil kharabi. You are born to die and you construct the huge buildings to be destroyed. So if a person is doing any action, for other than Allah, how long he is going to enjoy, how long he is going to entertain this prestige, this popularity? How long? Just for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, then new celebrities are surfaced. New people with popularity just come on the screen. So the intelligent people are those. When they do any sort of action, they try their best to make it only for the sake of Allah. Whenever shaitan, because his job is to spoil our intention, his job is to cause all sorts of problems for us. But whenever we feel such whisperings of shaitan, making a lot of istighfar, a lot of istighfar, and this istighfar will pre prevent our amal to be destroyed. So Riya is is a kind of termite. When we see the pictures or any other object, apparently it is quite okay, but inwardly it is all destroyed. A small insect, a termite, which eats up the things within. Without the outside, it is all okay, but inside, it's all hollow. It's all destroyed within. That is Riyah. That apparently you can, we can see a person performing the Salah, doing the charity, doing many sorts of delivering the lectures or attending the knowledge, sessions of knowledge and many other things. But inside, it's all useless, thriftless, worthless. That's why Imam Al-Ghazali, Rahimahullah, and other scholars as well, they have paid much attention towards it. And if you see that when we perform Ibadah, how much negligent we are in the uh, and when it comes to the dunya, we are all witty and active. There's no lethargy with us. We leave no stone unturned to ensure to, to, to get any, anything of dunya perfectly and properly. But when it comes to the when, when it comes to ibadah, to the forms of the worship, so shaitan is playing with us and we don't mind it. We are just a victim of the routinization. Routinely we perform salah, we do the dhikr, we recite the Quran, but it's a kind of routine matter. With no separate, with no life. Why? Because the degrees of ikhlas, higher degrees of ikhlas are missing. And most of the people, I don't say all the people, they are the righteous and pious people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who ensure to do each and everything for the sake of Allah. So Riyah is one of the deadly diseases which we need to take care of. So, as I said before that the intention of 
doing a particular deed openly there can be a good intention there can be a bad intention behind it so intention is very important in this connection it is worth noting that people's intention may originally be directed to something good when doing such a, such acts as beautifying their clothes and decorating their houses for it is part of man's nature to dislike that any deficiency should be seen of him muslim reported on the authority of ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu that once the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam said he who has in his heart the weight of an atom of pride shall not enter paradise mithqal habbat min khardalin mithqal dharra if a person has the pride or arrogance in his heart to the weight of an atom prophet said sallallahu alayhi wasallam he will not enter the paradise because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mutakabbir takabbur is the attribute of allah and whoever tries to practice it will burn will be destroyed so opposite to, opposite to takabbur is tawadu what is tawadu humbleness humility when a person reflects upon his upon his creation he knows he comes to know about his weaknesses and then he recognizes the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala different forms of blessings and then he realizes that without the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was not able to do any any form of ibadah he was not able to do anything so now we need to understand as i said before that that riya is specifically in ibadah if a person is doing any form of ibadah and then he is doing this for other than allah not to seek the pleasure of allah not to seek the rida of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however in worldly affairs is it, is it considered to be riya no in this connection uh, there is a hadith reported by imam muslim rahimahullah on the thought of sayyidina abdullah ibn mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam he who has in his heart the, the weight of an atom of pride shall not enter paradise a man said Verily, a person loves that his dress should be fine, and his shoes should be fine. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam remarked, "Verily, Allah is most beautiful, and He loves beauty. Pride is to disdain the truth out of self self conceit and to contempt people." So here, in this hadith, makes a difference between what is done for the sake of Allah, what is done for the sake of the people, what is done for the sake of the nafs. So if a person Uh, the sahab the one of the sahabi he asked the question a beautiful question and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah doesn't love the pride in any form so he said a person wants to be well dressed up a person want that his house be good then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna allah jamil wa yuhibbu al jamal allah is beautiful allah is most beautiful and he loves beauty then what is takabbur pride is to disdain the truth out of self conceit when the truth is explained to a person each and every corner of truth is being explained and there is no way to deny it you completely make a person to to, to believe and you make to make him understand that 2 plus 2 makes 4 there is no way to call it 2 plus 2 makes 5 or 2 plus 2 makes 3 and once he understands it he fully grasps it but still he denies that is that is the takabbur that's what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes and pride is to disdain the truth and to contempt people contempt of people means that a person feels always that he is superior to others he never thinks that he never assumes the humbleness he thinks that he is superior to all all people are inferior to him so he is glorifying his own potential in such a way <clears throat> that he despises others he bemeans others other people are lowly and mean in front of him and so this sense of superiority over others this feeling of this feeling of to be to be to be to be superior to others this is proper, this is what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam defined as takabbur that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
won't let him to enter the paradise unless and until he faces the music in the hellfire. On the other hand, ikhlas, ikhlas, it, it makes a person to be humble enough. Ikhlas makes a person to be, to achieve the humility, to wear the humility all the time. وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Allah says in the Quran, Sayyidina Luqman rahimahullah, while advising his son, giving nasiha to his son, وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Do not walk on the earth out of pride. When you walk on earth, you must, you must have the humbleness and humility. وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا Do not walk on earth out of pride, out of arrogance, out of haughtiness. Because you can neither pierce the earth, you can never set the earth apart, nor can achieve the heights of the mountains. Your position is fixed, your potential is fixed, your energy is fixed. So you don't pose to be as if you are superior to all. Allah says in the in Surah Luqman, Indeed, Allah does not love those who are arrogant people, who are full of pride. Allah doesn't love them. Allah, Allah doesn't like them. Allah loves those people who are humble, who do the actions only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the motiv their motivation is always to do everything for the sake of Allah as they are blessed with the ikhlas. And you know, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that before the exact occurrence of the Qiyamah, the first thing we shall be taken, which we shall be taken away from the people, will be khushu, humility in the Salah. That you see, the jam-packed masjid, masjid full of people, but no one with the ikhlas. No one with the khushu and humbleness and humility. And unfortunately, that prediction of Prophet ﷺ is now becoming a reality day by day. So men of ikhlas are now very rare. We can have the people of worship, a lot of people who perform the worship, but men of ikhlas is very, is now very rare to find the people of ikhlas. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us among those people who always try to achieve the ikhlas, who are trying their best to have the ikhlas in their amal, in their deeds. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from all forms of riya, all forms of ostentation, all forms of show off. As uh, it's all, it renders the deeds worthless. It makes all the actions fruitless. So a person will be doing a lot of ibadah, but with no rewards. Then what is the benefit of such ibadah? A person tries his best, he spends his time, his energy. But by the end of the day, his energy is lost, his time is lost, his life is lost. Because what we are, we are actually the combination of the seconds, minutes and hours. We are the combination of days, weeks and months that makes our life. So a person is spending his life, a person is spending his time, spending his energy, spending his money, but by the end of the day, he is not going to get any reward for this. Then what is the benefit of such thing? Nothing. So blessed are those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed with the ikhlas. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all forms of our riyah, which we performed in, 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 until now. Because sometimes we don't know we are doing, we are, we are making show off. Though many a times we are aware, but sometimes we are not, we are doing, apparently it seems to be for the sake of Allah. But if examined, it examined properly, then it, then it is revealed that it's not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't know that how many deeds, how many forms of ibadah we thought that it is for the sake of Allah, but it was not, it turned out to be not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us 
from committing any sort of riya. I mean, Ya Rab. So Prophet Sallallahu made a difference between so what a person is uh, when a person is beautifying himself but there is no pride there is no any sort of arrogance then Allah loves such a thing when Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless a person with any form of blessing and Allah loves to see that blessing upon his servant so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah is most beautiful and he loves beauty pride is to disdain the truth out of self conceit and to contempt people Besides, some people prefer to rehearse and proclaim Allah's favors upon them. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, himself was ordered by Allah to do so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Duha, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ When Allah blesses us with certain blessings, we must say to it to the people, Allah has blessed me with this. So that uh, we, 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 we don't, we don't uh, become the victim of this pride and we don't become the victim of the self-conceit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our deeds and whatever deficiency there has been in our deeds. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to fix all our deficiencies and accept all our amal. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. <coughs> Subhanallah wa hamdihi. Subhanakallahu wa hamdihi. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Subhanahu rabbik wa rabbal izzati amma isifun. والسلام المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين